Okay, so we've um, got our map and their georeference. I'm going to minimize the display of that map and also turn it off. Now I'm going to add a map with a little bit more mapping so we can compile. So this is from a former student in a former class, just the northern part of the map area. Let's get the magnifying glass and zoom in. So it should be pretty familiar. There's no mapped faults on here, but we'll be able to add one that's near the strike and dip that we see. Okay, so this is the beginning of the main part of the activity, which is the editing. And so we want to start off by getting our, start off by getting our toolbars organized. So let's go to customize toolbars and let's get rid of a few we don't need. Like we don't need georeferencing anymore. We don't um, need spatial analysts, but we definitely do need editor and we also want advanced editing. And so you see the advanced editing popped out. So let's put those two next to each other, editor and advanced editing. We'll work largely with the editor. Let's just start to edit. So say editor, start editing. And these pre prepared uh, parts of the geodatabase are all connected. So you just click on contacts and lines. That'll be where we want to, where all of the features are that we're going to put in. Now, what's key is to appreciate that we want to do the lines first, and then we'll produce the polygons from the lines that bound them. And that might include the edge of the map. Another strategy is we're going to want to have short lines. And then a third one is we'll do some of the big polygons and then we'll add in the smaller ones. So this is a lot of trial and error. It's good to practice a few times just in part of the map. If you have to start over, you haven't wasted too much time. So let's get started. Well, we're ready to go. You see over here in this editor toolbar, there's the create features. and it's quite nice because Aaron built this for us with many of the features ready to go. So this, we can choose from contact accurate, contact approximate, fault accurate, etc. Let's just start off. Um, one thing I'm going to do, contact accurate, because of my example here, um, I'm going to map the, I'm going to put it sort of a line across the bottom here. That would be the map boundary you would have this already now before we go too far we need to also set up something that is called snapping and that is that it allows when the mouse is close to something of interest another line it'll snap to it it saves a bunch of, of time for us going to editor snapping snapping window and this snapping environment lets us choose to what we want to snap so we want to snap to the map border and we want to snap to the contacts and faults. We don't want to map snap to the other features, so just, just click those out. And then you just close it. Now we go back and we want to go snapping options. We want to do snapping tolerance about five pixels. So you can change that from map units to pixels, which is, if you remember from our georeferencing, is probably about 10 meters because they were two meters per pixel. So set that up. That will make things a little more smooth for it. Okay, so now let's get started. So we we clicked on, um, we already made one line, let's do another one. So let's uh, start off with uh, this approximate contact here along the edge of the alluvium. So you see as I get close to my map boundary, it's, it's kind of touching it. So now I just click as I go, I'm just uh, left clicking each vertex. I'm going to, instead of going all the way as a single line, let's stop by double clicking. But I still have the contact approximate selected, so I can just keep going. So touch the end of that line and keep going. So it turns out if we break the lines like this, so I'll double click and then click once and keep going. Um, and then I finish that one, double, uh, click and keep going. So click once to start once for vertices and dou double click to stop. So now if you want to see what you've done, you can turn off the base map and you can see, oh, okay, so we got the whole boundary mapped out with the last line highlighted. But now as you see as we come around, it looks like we have a solid line. So let's click contact accurate and keep going. Now even though we have the contact, the solid contact accurate continues, let's stop and then start again. So I double clicked and now let's look so we can see we have those two lines there separated. And you see that already they have the right pattern, which is 
dashed for the approximate and solid for the ac. So let's keep going. Let's go, uh, let's see here, we have contact accurate. Let's come back down, do this one. Right when we get to this boundary here, uh, let's stop by double clicking. Now I can do contact approximate, get this one. And I snap to the other one. So we want to have no, uh, as uh, they say, sort of these dangling lines. We want to have the, the lines touch each other. It'll allow for the polygons to be more easily produced. So now I'm just going to map a bunch and uh, you can sort of follow along. So what's important to see is I'm drawing fairly short ones for the same type of feature like contact approximate. I can just double click to stop and then click and then continue. So it's quite efficient. But every time I see there's an intersection, I go ahead and uh, do a new line. So many short ones. Let's see, we have a different kind of feature, this accurate contact there. I can check how did I do. Looks like I got most of the pieces there. So let's keep going. Now here I made a very small one, that's sort of annoyingly small, so I'm going to zoom in and look at it. It's so short. Now that it, since it's still blue, I can just hit the delete key on the keyboard and just delete it and then I could draw it again. Also note if you go to this, since I zoomed in, if I click to the on the blue arrow, I can zoom back out to where I was. So it's just an efficient uh, navigation thing. So we can see where how we're doing. Looks like I need a bunch of approximate contacts here. Okay, so we've got a pretty good amount. Then we see a couple of these smaller features that are underneath the colluvium, and we'll, we'll do them second. It turns out it's easier to build a few bigger polygons and then do the smaller ones. And this is something you'll learn by trial and error. Well, first let's do a little editing. So you can, um, even before that, let's first let's save our edits. So it's important to recognize that when you save the edits, you're saving them from the editor tool, which is different from saving the whole project, which we should do both of often. So uh, this is a little bit confusing, but you know, saving under the file menu just saves the state of the MXD, the kind of layout, but it doesn't save that editing. So you need to go and, and do both. Okay, so let's say now we I, I stopped with the create features. I'm going to click this little arrow, arrow, and if I go in, I can double click on a line. And if I double click, you can see that I um, have exposed the vertices of that line. And so you might say, well, you know, it's maybe not quite right. Let's sort of grab this one, and we can move it over a little bit. And once you click, it's changes position. So that's a really nice way to edit uh, features that you've drawn if you're not happy with them. Of course you could just click on it and delete it as well. Right click here, delete. So that would, uh, it's not a bad thing to do. This These are so quickly drawn. Okay, 